Major breaking news tonight. War erupts in the Middle East. A stunning surprise attack by Palestinian militants inside Israel on a major Jewish holiday. Israel declaring it is a war, launching a counterattack into the Gaza Strip, leveling this skyrise in response to the surprise invasion by Hamas forces, storming into Israel by land, sea, and air. Thousands of rockets launched into Israel, overwhelming its defenses. Hundreds dead in Israel and hundreds now in the Palestinian territory. Militants kidnapping Israeli soldiers and civilians, now holding them hostage. How many were taken? Israel's prime minister vowing revenge. Our correspondent inside Israel. President Biden condemning the attack on Israel, how the White House is trying to contain the crisis. The United States stands with Israel. Plus, security being ramped up at synagogues here in the U.S. amid fears of retaliation. Also in the U.S., two massive rainmakers can... Wow. At the time of this recording, as you can see, it's October 7th. And uh, 2020 and 23, this is breaking news here. I'm pre-recording this show uh, so that we can see what actually did happen here. Um, we've got to look at the history of Israel and the uh, West Bank and the Gaza Strip and who is Hamas, who is Pat the Palestinians. It goes on and on, and, and let's see if we can bring in the Bible to make sense of what's going on here. If it's something that I'm surprised took this long to happen again, but this is minor compared to what the major is going to be in Scripture. But this here right now is not minor, it's major because... Israel didn't see this coming. See in 60. You good. You good. You good. You good. Don't stop it. Base. Base. It's the show that will get you thinking. And where the topics are hot. Feel free to comment. Whether we agree or not. Cause he. He's got something to say, Sir Walter Jones. Sir Walter Jones. Report live seven days a week, always on time, but his time is not free. Sir Walter Jones, always on sleep. Latest trending topics had you jumping out your seat. He's got something to say. Come on in. The water's fine. Hello, everybody. So Walter, so Walter Jones Show. I'm here. It is the um, evening edition, <laughs> baby. Come on in. The water is indeed fine. Listen, you all, Israel is a power force to be reckoned with. You don't want to mess with them because they win wars. Do you understand? They win wars, and they win wars by the power uh, of God. Even though most people over there are Zionist, it's a nationalistic thing. It's not really a religious thing. Um, they don't really know God, not the God that we know of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they don't really know that God, all right? So this is more of a secular Israel than it is a, a spiritual Israel that will eventually change when we get further into the teaching of the tribulation. Uh, meanwhile, at one time, the Ottoman Empire in that area where they're fighting, Palestinian area, was a, a melting pot of, of um, not just... Um, Jews, but Muslims and Christians, the three main religions were there, major religions religions were there, and they were singing Kumbaya and living in and living peacefully with each other, which will we will see again in the future, again, eschatological teaching in the scriptures. But until then, uh, it, it's a it's a powder keg in Israel right now because this is all about a land grab. I often bring up the promise that God has made a covenant with the children of Israel, not just the Israelites, but he made a covenant with uh, obviously Adam, 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 Adam through the Edenic covenant and then Noah through the Noahic covenant. And then came the Jews through Abram, the Abrahamic covenant in Genesis chapter 15. And then uh, came the Palestinian covenant. That is both of those are about land 
Abraham's covenant is about his people and descendants and land, but Palestinian covenant is about land, period. This is where we are right now. So I want to see what happened uh, today. This is obviously Hamas decided to do this on a very popular day. Uh, Shemini at Siret, the day after Sukkot, uh, which is combined in Israel with, uh, let's see, some chat Torah. I could be saying this wrong, I'm sure. Uh, nominally a separate holiday. Thus, there is no partaking of meals in the Sukkot, nor use of the lalav and etrog. It goes on. The special prayer for rain is recited during this thing. All right, so this is a special holiday. To, uh, I think the Tizra might be the date here, 22, uh, 5784. Tizra 22, 5784 is the date on the Jewish calendar. That's that's today at the time of this recording. And a surprise attack happened uh, upon uh, the Israelites over there in the, uh, I believe, the Gaza Strip. So I want to give you some of the history of uh, what has been going on with Israel and these wars. Now, there are a list of wars, but before I go to the wars, I want to tell you why. All right, we have to answer the whys first so that we could find out why did Hamas feel that they could just do this and where did they come from. It's all about settlements. Building settlements in the, in the occupied territories is a no-no. What Israel decided to do is a no-no. Uh, in December 2016, the Security Council of the United Nations always got their hands in this, passed a resolution that condemns Israel for its building of settlements in East Jerusalem and the West Bank. However, the resolution was nothing but a formal statement of what most nations in the world already believed about the settlements. The United Nations has passed similar resolutions against Israel as far back as 1979. So the difference is that these resolutions did not carry the authority of the Security Council. That's the difference. 2016, the United States had always vetoed any Security Council resolutions against Israel. Israel and its relationship to its neighbors and the West Bank, which is Gaza, is a complicated issue. Very complicated and um. In America, it's complicated because depending on if wh who's the president, when Donald, when when Barack Obama was the president, and he was meddling in their affairs, it was those on the Republican end, the the, the conservative right, uh, the white evangelicals. They were going hard, going heavy against um, Barack Obama, especially those who were part of the Kufi uh, Christians United for Israel. That's John Hagee's thing, and. Just don't do it because the United States has always been a financial supporter of, of Israel, right? Since the time they have been um, came back as a nation, it was the United States that had had a big part in agreeing that they would become a nation. Israel became a sovereign nation in 1948 when the United Nations officially recognized its existence. Immediately, Israel's neighbors attacked the new nation, seeking to destroy it before it could be established. Hint of today. This conflict became known as the Arab-Israel uh, War and in 1948, and Israel defeated the armies of Egypt, Syria, Jordan, and Iraq. Those names will pop up again. Egypt, Syria, Jordan, and Iraq. After fighting in, ended, the nation of Israel stayed within the borders designated for it by the, the United Nations. Good, good boys, good boys. 19 years later, in 1967... Egypt, Jordan, Syria, and Iraq attacked again with additional help from who? Other Arab nations in what was known as the Six-Day War. Y'all remember that one. Israel again defeated the attackers. Israel is the most, one of the most powerful intellectual um, military forces in the world. They're in, they're in their military intelligence is, is on fleek. So the fact that they were caught off guard by Hamas is upsetting them. That's why they, uh, they shoot rockets everywhere. They shoot rockets everywhere because they're so mad that they were caught off guard. Now, after this conflict, however, Israel seized control of the West Bank and East Jerusalem. That's uh, from Jordan. 
the, Sin the, the, the Sinai Peninsula and Gaza from Egypt and the Golan Heights from Sy Syria. Ever since Israel's uh, occupation of these territories have been a matter of international debate, Israel gave the, uh, the Sinai Peninsula back to Egypt in 1979 as part of the Egypt-Israeli Israel Peace Treaty, but it still remains control of the West Bank, Gaza, and the Golan Heights. All right? Still retains control. West Bank, Gaza, the Golan Heights. Israel has been building settlements. Here's where the problem is. Y'all caught up? They've been building settlements in East Jerusalem and the West Bank since 1972, although the building of the settlements has been greatly expanded in recent years. So the Palestinians, where this thing is, in the West Bank have protested loudly, claiming those lands belong to them. However, Israel was attacked by its neighboring countries at, at the behest of the Palestinians. They stick together. So there is a universally understood concept that if you attack a nation and lose, there are consequences. So the attacks on Israel in 1948 and then the Sixth Day War in 1967, the countless in, uh, intifadas, the acts of terrorism, the kidnapping, kidnappings, what have you, all that have all been unprovoked unprovoked today was unprovoked or was it depending on whose side you're on because america is also split on even the fight with russia and ukraine the people who are fighting uh, wanting us to give uh, more billions of dollars to ukraine to help defend themselves from russia and there are others who say don't do it typically it's the republicans are saying no and the democrats are saying yes israel has never been the military aggressor against its neighbors when a nation seizes territory from the nations that attack it, the action is normally seen as justifiable war for that nation to uh, solidify its defense. Because the United States don't want to, don't what well, they say, they don't want to be a part of any nation who is acting like bullies. So we like Israel. In any situation not involving Israel, there would be universal recognition of the nation's right to control and seize territory. So for some reason, when uh, the situation involves Israel, the international community has always been on the side of the Palestinians and Israel's Arab neighbors. Y'all hear that? Why is this? Latent and over anti-Semitism, possibly? The tremendous influence of the Arab nations due to their control of the oil market? Hmm, because you know, we're hooked on it. Compassion for the Palestinians? Don't know. It is likely a combination of those and other factors, but none of those factors changed the history. Israel suffered an unprovoked attack and occupied those territories in order to better defend itself from future attacks what would you do so biblically speaking israel has every right to possess occupy and build homes where in the west bank east of jerusalem and the golden heights the gaza and far more they have biblical rights typically those who are against them are non-believers non-christian non um I don't know, well, I, I, I'm about to say orthodox, but all of those territories are well within the borders of the land that God promised the nation of Israel, all right? The word of God declares it, it belongs to them, Genesis 15 and 18, then Joshua 1 and 4. Unless the Palestinians are descendants of the tribes of Israel, which is possible, they have absolutely no biblical claim to live on their lands. Whatever the case, they have no biblical basis for preventing the nation of Israel from occupying and building homes in those territories as well. Again, the United States is split. They're very split. So then who are Hamas? Hamas is a Palestinian nationalistic or nationalist group that seeks to eliminate the nation of Israel. Wipe them off the face of the earth, earth as uh, the Iranian uh, Abedinejad, uh, president, uh, the previous president said. 
We're going to wipe them off the face of the earth. They are they want to eliminate them, replace it with an Islamic state. Right? So uh he, here here is that word here. This is the word uh harakat al mukawama uh al islamiyah. That <laughs> that is Hamas. And what does it mean? It simply means uh Islamic resistance islamic resistance movement right that's what it means okay and hamas is a military muslim group that functions through several semi-independent branches those are the ones who came in in attack today each focusing on the categories now the category it would be likened to Al Capone and some of the gangsters of old who did good work, charity work, feeding the poor, getting uh, houses and trying to low taxes, lower taxes, all kind of stuff. They were in the politics, although they were trying to put their guy in there uh, for another reason. But Hamas, uh, they, they are about charity media and military action while social welfare although it's you know admirable the group's uses of violence and semi-semitic propaganda have resulted in it being designated as a terrorist organization Ku Klux Klan was doing good stuff all right they were feeding kids and they was they were, they were doing all kind of stuff but they still is a terrorist organization by the nations worldwide Hamas. So the group most notable oper uh, operates in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip of Israel. Hamas is heavily supported by nations such as Iran, Qatar, and Turkey. We're going to see that on our biblical list in a minute. The military efforts of Hamas are routinely denounced as acts of terrorism. Uh, these include suicide bombings, the mass uh, uh, launching of homemade unguided rockets, which we saw today, and other acts directly uh, targeting Israel civilians. They were kidnapping civilians. They were killing people by the bus stops. I mean, we haven't seen this in so long. Observers have also criticized Hamas for deliberately placing weapons and other military resources in, in civilian areas. Some have gone further and accused a group of using Palestinians as human shields. We saw that today. Defenses against such charges tend to rely on uh, technicalities and uh, legalese. Without question, Hamas has shown itself willing to endanger Palestinian people to further their political and religious goals. They studied this for months. They didn't just come in there, just happenstance. Israel, again, is a, has a military intelligence that's, that's out of this world. But how was Hamas able to just do what they did today? They got caught off guard, and we're going to see this in the, in, in the scriptures in First Thessalonians. Hamas also participates in anti-Semitic propaganda and media pr pr productions, and this includes program targeting at children that encourage martyrdom and hatred for Jews and support of terrorists' acts. Due to the claimed separation of Hamas different branches, it is sometimes argued that these radio, television, and print productions do not represent the actual views of Hamas. Mm. Given that the branches of Hamas are common resources, uh, leadership, and aims, uh, this is not a reasonable defense. Criticism of Hamas is by no means, no means limited to pro-Israel, Western, or anti-Islamic voices. A great many Palestinian people also disagree with Hamas tactics, and some also reject their more uh, extreme goals. And though Hamas is normally, nominally a Sunni Muslim organization, Sunni Muslim organization, many Muslims disapprove of the group. Now, regardless of how one view the ongoing Arab-Israelite conflicts, groups primarily dealing in hatred and terrorism, such as Hamas, should not be supported. And I'm going to show you something here. Okay, so biblically speaking, the opposite of God's plan for Israel 
is what they're doing. Hamas desires Israel's destruction while God desires to bless Israel and bring about peace. And we are to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they be secure who love you. That is Psalm 122, verse 6. Uh, Hamas' hatred to Israel places it under God's curse. Genesis chapter 12, I will bless those who bless you and him who dishonors you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So they are doing the opposites <laughs> of what God has uh, uh, required of us to do. Now, I am not a person who will agree with everything that Israel do because that can cause a problem because, um, you know, Israel has been known to do some things that they should not have done. Or, um, and yes, we're praying for the peace of Jerusalem, but we're not going to be praying for Jerusalem to just get away whatever, whatever they want to get away with. That's not the case today. The first Thessalonians chapter five says now concerning how and when all this will happen, dear brothers and sisters, we don't really need to write you for, you know, quite well that the day of the Lord return is coming. will come unexpectedly. All right. Y'all get ready. This is a, this is a precursor here, but what you saw today is a, in, is a way to look into the glass like a thief in the night when people are saying everything is peaceful. When they say peace and safety, y'all, everything is peaceful and secure. Then disaster will fall on them suddenly as a pregnant woman labors pain begin and there will be no escape. That is what Hamas did to them today. That is what's going to happen uh, later on. And um, as we get further into eschatology teaching, we're going to see it even more. Now, let's look at these wars here. We're going to pull up Wikipedia. This is a list of wars involving Israel since the Declaration of Independence in 1948. Here it is, 1948, Arab-Israelite War. 1947-49 started six months of civil war between Jewish and Arab and militia. All right. That one right there, mandate period in Palestine, Palestine was ended and turned into a regular war. Now, we know about this one. They won. They're good. Palestinian insurgency, uh, Fadayin, 1950 to 1960. Then you got the Suez War, 1956. Military attack Egypt by Britain. Okay, Britain got their hands all in this. Remember I talked about the Ottoman Empire? The Brits. Brits got their hand in all this, especially with Palestine. I'll have to do another show on that. Six day war. We talked about that in 1967. Uh, we talked about Egypt, Jordan, Syria. Okay. Kuwait, Algeria goes on. The war of attrition, a limited war fought between the Israelite military and forces of the Egyptian Republic, the USSR, Jordan, and Syria. All right. The PLO, you remember them? Well, that's the Palestinian Liberation Organization. All right, uh, let's see. And then come Yom, Yom, Kippur, uh, Yom Kippur War, <laughs> October 1973. That's a tongue tie right there. The Palestinian insurgency in South Lebanon. South Lebanon conflict. I'm trying to get to what's happening today. Then 1987 came the first Intifada. The first Intifada war, the first that's Intifada basically uh, is, uh, uh, I think it's called, literally called shaking off. And this first, into, um, this stuff right here, this first Intifada war gave birth to Hamas. Okay. That gave birth to Hamas. Here's where we start. Here's where the problem is. And then came the second Intifada, and then 2006 or 11, the Lebanon War, the Gaza War, Operation Cast Lead, I remember that. 2012 Operation and Gaza Strip, 2014 Gaza War, the Operation Protective Edge. All right. I remember this, yes. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sir, Syrian Civil War, 2021, a couple years ago. This one right here, Operation Guarded of the Walls. Uh, notice that Hamas is now. There were riots between Jews and Arabs in Israel. I, 
cities, also Hamas, and Gaza sent military rockets into Israel and the Iron Dome. Intercepted most dangerous rockets. Israel attacked targets in Gaza. And now uh, Wikipedia updated what happened today. They updated it. Right. So we have to see what's happening in world history, biblical history. And um, this is just, again, a precursor of what's going to happen And let's go to Ezekiel chapter 38. You see here, this is another message that came to me. And and the Lord, son of man, turn and face Gog uh, of the land of Magog. Gog is a person, by the way. It it might be Russia, right? Uh, The prince who rules over the nations of Meshach and Tubal, we believe, and prophesy against him. Give him the message from the sovereign Lord. Gog, I am your enemy. I will turn you around. Pay close attention here. God is saying, I'm your enemy, and God is talking to the enemy. I will turn you around and put hooks in your jaws to lead you out um, with your whole army. God is the one that starts these wars. Your horses and chariots in full armor and a great horde are armed with shields and swords. And then he brings up Persia, Ethiopia, Libya will join you too with all of their weapons. Gomar and all its armies will also join you along with the armies of Beth uh, Togomar from the distant north, right? From the distant north and many others. Now that doesn't necessarily mean Russia, but it's quite close. All right. So this is NLT obviously. And Persia would be Iran. Uh, and uh, Ethiopia have another name. Uh, Libya also has another name that that actually is put. Okay, if you're reading in the King James, it may read something different. Get ready, be prepared, keep all the armies around you mobilized, and take command. Command a long time from now. A long time from now, you will be called in action. In the distant future, you will swoop down of the land of Israel, which will will be in what? Enjoying peace. That's a big hint. After recovering from war. Hmm. Which war? Could it be today's war? And after its people have returned from many lands to the mountains of Israel, you and all your allies, a vast, awesome army, will roll down on them like a storm and cover the land like a cloud. This is what the sovereign Lord says. At that time, evil thoughts will come to your mind and you will devise a wicked scheme. You will say Israel is an unprotected land filled with unwalled villages. They're going to tear their walls down. That's how comfortable they're going to be. Again, that's how uh, Hamas attacked them today because they were comfortable. They're going to be comfortable again. We'll march against her and destroy these people who live in such confidence. I will go to those formula, formerly desolate cities that are now filled with the people who have returned from exile in many nations. I will capture vast amounts of plunder for the people. All right, so God is saying here, I'm going to use you, the enemy, my enemy, to attack my people. And you're going to get over there, and then I'm going to attack you. <laughs> and then my people are going to kill you. It's going to take several months for them to gather up the the spoil and uh, I think I don't know uh, the, the next chapter talk about I think nine months to bury the dead it's going to be horrible y'all it's going to be a horrible time and I don't believe that we all will be here I don't believe it all right because there's a difference between this war and the um the Armageddon war matter of fact let me see I have some Notes that I did right here for uh, a long time ago, the war of Gog and Magog. Uh, this war may not happen anytime soon between uh, because of uh, what Ezekiel 38, 8, 11, and 14 says. The war of Gog and Magog will not occur until the people of Israel are living securely in unwalled villages. So that's not happening right now. And it's, it's, it's a powder keg over there right now. So it's, it may be a while before you see Israel be that comfortable, especially after what happened today. It's going to take them a while. Some believe this war won't begin until after the first part of the tribulation. 
uh, when the Antichrist will sign a peace treaty with Israel. So this war could happen after the rapture, and then this war happens, and then the second part of the tribulation happens. Uh, but a further look tells us that this war may begin out seven years before the tribulation. Before the tribulation, for the tribulation is seven years, and that uh, that first three and a half years, the Antichrist will kick them out of Jerusalem. So that makes sense. So in Ezekiel 39 and 9, we see where the Jews burned the weapons for seven years. So if uh, the, God, the war of Gog and Magog does happen seven years before the tribulation, then we are here. More than likely, we're here to witness that. Well, somebody's here. I'm, I'll probably, I'm sure I'll be dead and gone, <laughs> but we don't know. Israel was born in war and is in constant defense of harm from enemies. It's just the way it is. Isaiah 66 and 8 talked about them being born. Who has ever seen anything as strange as this? Who ever heard of such a thing? Has a nation ever been born in a single day? Has a country ever come forth in a mere moment? But by the time Jerusalem's birth pains began, her children will be born. Mm. Mm -mm. Her children will be born. So there are many wars that we, we do see in the end time. Uh, the war of Israel's ex, uh, Psalm 83, the extermination. All right. Israel will eventually destroy Damascus as written in Isaiah chapter 17. I'd like to do some of these shows here. The first war of Gog and Magog, which we, we just talked about. The convention, no war of the tribulation in Revelation chapter 6. The nuclear war of tribulation, Revelation chapter 8. Okay, a third of uh, about a billion, half a billion will die. Uh, the war in the heavens, Revelation chapter 12. The war against the Jews and the saints, Revelation chapter 12. The Middle East campaign of the Antichrist, Daniel 11 and 40. The battle of Armageddon comes after that. Joel 3, Zechariah 14, Revelation chapter 19. And then the second battle of Gog and Magog happens. That's Revelation chapter 20. So the first one was with Russia and her allies. The second one is with Russia and all the world. Revelation chapter 20. Okay, you understand? Are you with me? GP, are you with me? So let's look on the map and see what's happening here. So God says, I'm a, Gog, I'm talking to you, Gog, and I'm going to put a hook in your mouth and I'm pull you out. And Libya, all right, gather up Libya, which is put Iran over here, which is Persia, change in 1935. Kush, this is Kush here, which would be Sudan. Okay, probably. Uh, and uh, Gomar Beth, which is Turkey. All right, you see that? So bam, 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 bam. They're going to line up, and you see who's in the middle, you all. It's perfect. God knew what he was doing. He strategically had them surrounded. Who's in the middle? Israel. All these great nations, Muslim nations, are going to attack one little piece of plot of land, and God's going to show himself strong. Ooh, to the we. Now, that's, that's a bad God right there, y'all. Mm. There was no mention of Egypt. There was no, no mention of, of Jordan. There is no, uh, no mention of Syria, Lebanon, or Gaza, which are the bordering states, okay? There's no mention of these bordering states who are going to attack Israel. No, God goes out wide. He does a wide stance. Now, ain't that amazing? God is so strategic. We need to pray for the people, okay, of, uh, of Israel 
so because there are some people over there who need who need to be saved whole lot of them by the way whole lot of them america needs to get it right because we're next these nations all over the world is trying to come up with a monetary uh, thing to um, outdo America's dollar. Once we, gosh, in 71, through Richard Nixon, removed the gold standard, our dollar began to weaken because it's not backed by gold anymore. It's backed by nothing but a promise, a promise from someone who you don't even trust, the United States of America. Many of the nations began to pull back their gold. That's why we had to remove the gold from the dollar because it was it was attacking the dollar. So now we got um, Russia coming together with China and with uh, uh, who's that? Iran and parts of Africa. You know they're coming together, and the day will come when the dollar will be something that you just burn for a fire. Get your house in order. We please spiritually get it in order. Meanwhile, since the dollar is still worth something, stop overly spending it, wasting it, but invest it and save it uh, so that if you live this out before all this happened, at least you live this out <laughs> before all this happened, you can retire. Meanwhile, your children, great grandchildren may be here during that time. And so do what you can to raise up your posterity in the Lord. Because they're getting ready to face something that we have never, ever seen. So let's continue to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We know that war is going to happen, right? And, but we want to pray for the peaceful minds of Jerusalem. Somebody over there get to know the real God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Elohim, Adonai, Yahweh. Him. Yah. That God right there, I pray that those people get to know him. Guess what? They will, many of them, but it's going to be too late for some because they have to enter into the tribulation. 144,000 will be gathered. They will be strong supermen from the 12 tribes of Israel. Unfortunately, Dan will not be there. <laughs> they will evangelize. Many from around the world will be saved. Then you see this number that no man can number all races and cultures and creeds and people all over all right so don't think because christianity is is falling by the wayside and before you know it it's going to be only one in five people are believers in jesus christ the great revival that ain't coming in this time is going to come then there's going to be a great falling away which is happening right now and then the son of petition will show up once he come on the scene the great revival is coming because People are going to want to get to know this Lord who <laughs> snatched us up, left them here, right? And that's that's going to be a, a congregation of people that, again, you won't be able to name, n number them. Millions, millions. But the song says millions didn't make it. <laughs> but I was the one, one of the ones who did. Thank you, God, for this information. Thank you, God, for allowing us to show the people what's going on to inform them of what's to come so that we be strengthened in the word we will be prepared the apostle paul said to encourage one another in these things because in the end we win <laughs> man i tell you it's wonderful to know the story before we enter into it we know the story now so we can be encouraged know that all these dastardly horrible things and death and mayhem is going to happen you're going to protect us and seal us until the day you come we love you give your name to praise in jesus name amen amen all right y'all let me stop and and go somewhere i've got a lot of more shows to do uh and uh to, to pre-record because i am starting uh, uh, my uh, finals week starting monday all week long so you won't you won't hear from me live so it'll all be pre-recorded okay um yeah that's it take care of yourselves and one another i love you all more than you know for those of you who've been given thank you all who've been given to the cash app and to my um my paypal and all this stuff y'all have been, been a blessing to me and my my posterity <laughs> thank you all it helps us 
to provide funds and, and books and food and what have you to people who are poor as well. So killing two birds with one stone. Take care of yourself. I love y'all. children are. Fellas, does it seem like you can't get a good woman? Ladies, wonder why you can't keep a man? Then read The Four Women That Men Desire, Volume 1, by Sir Walter Jones to figure out how to break the cycle. Go to Amazon.com to get your copy today.